in Somerville anyway. We're completely broke, and our grandfather left us this creepy old farmhouse in the middle of nowhere. Your father wasn't much of a homemaker. He could hardly keep the power on. You're saying he left us nothing? Well, I wouldn't say nothing. You went with the station wagon? It's the only one that had an engine. So obviously, Ghostbusters has been a part of your life for the whole of your life. Yeah. When did you kind of decide you wanted to get involved in a professional capacity? Uh, in directing or Ghostbusters specifically? No, Ghostbusters specifically. You know, this has been a slow burn over the last 10 years, you know? These characters kind of came into my head and I didn't really know who they were. Eventually I realized they were the Spengler family. And I really found myself ready to tell the story once it kind of mirrored my own life. You know, I'm the son of a Ghostbuster. And once I knew they were the grandchildren of Ghostbuster and this film would be about picking up that legacy, I knew how to tell it. Okay. And I mean, how did you kind of find stepping into that world? Because you must have entered it with some trepidation because it's in the family. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to be the guy who ruins Ghostbusters, you know? If I'm going to pick up the baton, carry the torch for a bit, uh, I don't want to let anyone down, particularly my father. So I only stepped in once I knew exactly what I wanted to do and I thought it was possible to make a film that was a worthy sequel. And how was kind of casting? Because obviously a huge part of this film is children and young teenagers. How was kind of casting that? Because I, I imagine that's even more difficult to get right than casting, you know, actors. Uh, you know, we had written uh, a family that we were really proud of, and we cast a very wide net. We looked at tapes from around the world. And fortunately, we found not only, you know, young actors that we're very familiar with, like Finn Wolfhard and McKenna Grace, but new actors like Logan Kim and Celeste O'Connor that I think audiences are gonna fall in love with. And um, obviously Paul Rudd is kind of a big part of the story. When did he come into the picture? I mean, could you imagine making it with anybody else? No, I really can't. You know, Paul Rudd is the kind of genius comedian that I could almost imagine my father casting back in 1984 had he been the right age. Uh, he's the kind of actor who makes everything he's in better. He's a great writer, he's a great improviser, and he's a perfect Ghostbuster. Um, obviously, since the kind of original two movies were made, visual effects have come on leaps and bounds. How was it kind of marrying, you know, what made Ghostbusters great with the advances in technology? Were you kind of keen to have a balance of both? One of the great joys of making this film was finally getting to do action sequences. You know, there was no car chase in Juno. Uh, so to have Ecto-1 flying around corners, you know, with McKenna Grace hanging out the side, busting a ghost, to have a little RTV going, uh, it was a real thrill. Uh, but in addition to that, really getting into the type of filmmaking that my father did in the 84. Dry ice, wires, magnets, mirrors, and of course, puppetry and animatronics, something I've wanted to do my entire life. And I mean, how are those kind of big sequences to direct? Because obviously they look wonderful, but I imagine they're, you know, a pain in the butt to get right. <laughs> well, it's a different kind of directing, you know. Uh, my career has been mostly made of, you know, filming people talking. And uh, it's a whole other thing to have these storyboarded sequences and to be shooting things over long periods of time. The centerpiece car chase of this film, The Muncher Chase, which I could basically watch every day, uh, it took the entire film shoot to get. And how was it kind of visualizing, you know, the ghosts, the, the villains of the piece? Because I guess making sure that they look right and have the mic kind of threat, but also, you know, aren't totally horror film terrifying is, is a difficult balance to strike. Well, you know, we were lucky in that we were working with just incredible artisans. Uh, the nice thing about when you say you're doing Ghostbusters is you get all these creature creators and designers and artists and puppeteers who grew up loving Ghostbusters and want nothing more than to add something to that mythology. So uh, from the people uh, designing pen on paper to the people actually uh, uh, sculpting out of clay and creating these maquettes, and uh, they were all Ghostbusters fans, and they wanted to get it right as much as I did. So having delved into this world, are you keen to do more if there's an appetite for more, or does this very much feel like a one-off thing? Uh, you know, first and foremost, we wanted to create a film that was a foundation for more Ghostbusters. I'd love to see my favorite directors come into this mythology and direct Ghostbusters movies. Every culture around the world has a relationship with the supernatural and there deserves to be more movies. I remember Revelations. And I looked as he opened the sixth seal. 
there was a great earthquake. Judgment Day. Raise a call. I'm calling about what happened in New York. There hasn't been a ghost sighting in 30 years. Oh my god. What is happening here? My grandfather was a ghostbuster. Something was coming and he knew it. I think we opened the gates of hell. Hey, have you missed us?